Good evening, Bayman faithful. We are coming to you live from the Boathouse. Bayman basketball. Our JV squad is taking on the Locust Valley Falcons, and I am joined by a very special guest, Oyster Bay varsity star, Luke Barong. Luke, welcome to the broadcast. How are you tonight? Thank you for having me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be here tonight and watch uh, the JV game. I uh, have some high hopes for uh, Oyster Bay going into tonight. Luke, these games are always exciting. Locust Valley comes in. They are they are our local rival, our geographic rival, oh, yeah. our sports rival. They're always exciting. Last time they played us, they beat us on their home court. But tonight, Coach Venegas has these boys, this JV squad, playing better. They're gelling together. They're looking better. You've been seeing them sharing a gym together. What have you been noticing about this team coming into this game? The Locust Valley or Oyster Bay? Oyster Bay, of course. Well, Oyster Bay, you know, they have been playing better, I think. I think that uh, it's going to be a great matchup tonight. Um, you know, my main player I'm looking at is Owen Perfetti. I think he's, uh, he's going to really run the offense well tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll see what he does from here. So Owen started the season... He wasn't getting regular minutes to start the season. He's really grown into that point guard role as this season has rolled on. He had that big game-winning shot at Carl Place not too long ago. Yes. And we've seen, if you've been watching these games, his confidence has really starting to grow. And he's really starting to run this offense with a lot of poise. He's really directing him the way a coach wants a point guard to run that offense. You know, coach Venegas has supported him and his confidence. You know, I've heard him tell him to, uh, I don't care if you take 20 shots, man, just he told him to keep that confidence rolling, and I think that's going to be uh, best for him. And Coach Venegas would know. He's a graduate of Oyster Bay High School. He played in this program here. He dropped blood on this court. He dropped his sweat on this court. He bleeds purple and gold. He knows what it takes to win and to succeed on this court, and he's instilling that into these players. Another player to watch out for tonight, Aiden Winhausen. He is a dominant force down on the low post. Mm -hmm. He grabs rebounds. He scores. What are you seeing out of Aiden? I think you said it right. He uh, he really boxes out well, gets those rebounds. You know, he had a buzzer beater to uh, go to double overtime against Wheatley not too not too long ago. But uh, yeah, that's his best um, that's his best attribute: rebounding, boxing out, and he's good down low. So Oyster Bay's coming out. We've got Windhausen, Jackson Kelly, Freddie Von Bargen. We have one of the Henry twins and the aforementioned Owen Perfetti. Locust Valley's coming out. It looks like they've got Singh, Alaka, Gurchins, Herbig, and Levin. That's it. It looks like Herbig still has some of his uh, soccer playoff hair being rocked over there. That was some good defense there from Von Bargen. Reading that play real well. And here comes Perfetti running the point. And there it is right there. There comes Perfetti coming out swinging hard. And he's saying, you know what? Come at me, boys. I got this. Just talked about his confidence. And look what it does. Oh. Nice rebound from Winhausen. Get the break started the other way. Dump it off to Profetti. Let him do his thing. That was a great look on the inside to Winhausen, but he can't. Looked like there's a little bit of contact there, but the ref said he got all ball. I think he was watching a different game. Windhausen, another rebound. And Winhausen draws a foul inside the paint. He's going to be shooting too. It's always good when your big man can come into the paint, draw that contact, get the other team into foul trouble early. But of course, you can't be like Shaquille O'Neal and you can't have like a 22% free throw yeah. shooting, right? You have to be more like who? 
Steph Curry. A little Steph Curry on the line, right? Yeah. He goes 0 for 2 from the charity stripe, and here comes Locust Valley running the ball back the other way. Demos running point. That's Off great. the pick, he's got a little Michael Jordan action. Jelly. A little up and under. Nice move. Demo with the steal, coming back the other way. Refs were charitable with the steps there, and he's got another two. That's a Joe Henry gives it up, but you know what? I like that he, he stayed in the play. He didn't drop his head. He got the steal right back coming the other way. Let's strong. see what Oyster Bay can do here coming back. Deep three. That looks like a, 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 a Luke Barong style three, dropping it back from way deep. You know, back in my days, JV, took them long shots. Oh, rebounded by Kelly. Oyster Bay pushing the ball. Great ball movement from our Bayman right there. That is the difference between last year's JV team and our JV team this year. We have developed plays a lot better and ran them through much more, and that's why we get uh, way more sc scoring opportunities than last year. But let's see what we can do here on defense. Yeah, the, uh, the ball movement from last year to this year is so much more improved. Oh, yeah. Solid defense by Von Bargen. Long shot. You're going to call Windhausen for reaching in there. There's his first. Non shooting foul. Defense by your Bayman. Rebounded by Windhausen out to Owen. Windhausen doing it all over the court right now. Perfetti pushing the ball. Corner. We're going to get Jackson Kelly with a with a weak travel. With a weak travel. Two-thirds of the way through the season, who would you say the MVP of the team is right now? Owen. Owen Perfetti? Owen Perfetti. See, I think there's a case to be made for Windhausen. Definitely a case. But, you know... Friend Jaden over here. He was balling, but before he got injured, you know, had a 30, 30 point game against West Hempstead. How much does a loss of, of someone like Jaden Malord hurt this team? A lot, you know, because he was a great value to this team. Could dribble, shoot, drive, everything really, and it really hurt them to uh, lose him. Yeah, you know, he, he, Jaden, Jaden's a great player. He got off to a rocky start. He was starting to feel himself as the season got on, and that nasty injury to his knee. The mysterious injury that the doctors couldn't pinpoint, no expected day to return, that really is going to set back his development, which kind of really hurts him. And, you know, that this is a guy who, you know, you could probably see maybe a late season call up to varsity, maybe get a little bit of run. But as now let's we'll see how he can respond and come back in the track season um, and maybe next year in football. Looks like they're going to get Windhausen again on the floor. That's two for him already. 
No, they're calling that foul on, on Perfetti. All right. Shooting foul for Demo. Knocks the first one down. And that's how you punish a team. You got to hit your charity stripe shots. 6 3 Locust Valley. All six of their points have been scored by Demo. And he got the steal. He's going to come back the other way. Two more for Demo. 8 3 Locust Valley. And Coach Venegas is going to call a much needed timeout. Going to get a little regroup in action, and we're going to see what we can put together here. And we're coming back out of the timeout. Let's see how Oyster Bay comes out. We've got our same five coming out. Let's see what kind of adjustments Coach Venegas is making with these boys. I don't know that these refs understand what traveling is. His pivot foot never moved. Did you see any movement? No. Did not see movement. Oyster Bay getting some defense chance going. Gurchins pulls it up inside the paint. Benhausen. That was a good job making something out of nothing there. Much needed points for the Bayman. Much needed. Cutting the lead down to five. Demo is just killing their Bayman tonight. That's 10 for him. There's a steal from Malaka. And he cannot convert. Another rebound from Jackson Kelly. Pass to Buffetti. Oh, Jackson with the big three. Jackson Kelly, the big three-pointer. Has been doing that for a while, Jackson, knocking down those three-pointers. Long three from the Falcons. Rebounded by Perfetti. Looks like they're going to hold for the final shot. Couldn't convert. Looking for the N1. Doesn't get it. He's going to line for two. 
Let's see if he can make some adjustments off his last foul shots. Hit these two. Bring Oyster Bay to within two going into the second quarter. He made the adjustment. His first two free throws were short. This one's long. Let's see if he can hit the next one. Let's see. And that'll do it for the end of the first quarter. Locust Valley 12, Oyster Bay 8. We'll see you in a few minutes, folks. Coming back into the second quarter, we are now joined by Good Oyster Bay. Pass by Owen Perfetti. Football star Christian Munoz. Perfetti with the great dish down to Windhausen. And a layup. George Henry now in the game, known for his defensive presence. Let's see what he can do here on number 24. We got both of the Henry boys in the game. And Von Bargen picks up his first foul. Quick two from Gurchens. Ruled out a three. Oh, he called it a three? I thought his foot was on the line. He should come up here and look at the videotape. I think the Henrys have a disadvantage right now. So when they play football, no one can tell that they're twins. Four seconds on the shot clock, and he's getting called for a double dribble. In basketball, though, you can completely see them, so you know that they're twins. Yeah. They need to use that to their advantage against the other team to confuse them. Exactly. I don't know how they do that, but they, they got to figure that out. They got time. Oh, yeah. Oh, Gurchins with another three. That's eight on the night for Gurchens. Tipped out by Lucas Valley. Wish to ball. That was a nice pass on the inside from Perfetti. You can see he's been working on that all season. That's a pass a point guard makes. Sure has been working on that. That was a great look on the inside. High arcing shot from George Henry there. 
Rebounded by Winhausen. Perfetti pushing. That was a nice ball fake right there. And the swing around. Offensive rebound by Winhausen. Tries to knock it off one of the Falcons' legs. Good defense by George Henry. Good defense by Freddie with the block and then the foul on Winhausen. That is some great defense right there. Starting with the, the getting the hand in there by George Henry, the block by Freddie Von Bargen to try and shut down this Locust Valley offense. Down eight. Great job by the Bayman staying in this game. George smiling as number 24 pushed him. George, George is one of the toughest kids in the school. He's not going to sit there and let that Offensive foul. set up for that. Offensive foul on Locust Valley's number two, Alaka. And we're going back the other way. Jackson Kelly back in the game, and so is Max Lapidus checking in for the first time. And we got a timeout, Oyster Bay. And we'll be back in a minute. 30-second uh, timeout. We'll be back in a minute. It looked like during that timeout, one of the officials went over to Locust Valley bench and was having, having a little conversation with him. He might have been giving him a warning for the physical play. Something we need to keep an eye on as this game goes on here in the second quarter. Five minutes, 18 seconds left. Locust Valley's up 18-10. Jackson Kelly with a big three-pointer. You know, with our local rivalry, it'll always get physical between Oyster Bay and Locust Valley, but that's what we like to see here, but not too much, you know. Physical hard plays are characteristics of our these conference B teams, but we still want to keep it within the bounds of play. Well, good defense, great by block, Kelly. great block by Jackson Kelly, and we're going back the other way. He's feeling it. Gurchins with the rebound and another two points. In and out from George Henry, but great rebound by Freddie Von Bargen. Using that big height. Jump ball. Jump ball. Locust Valley ball. I noticed, I'm going to tell you something. Here's a little insider information for all you people listening at home and watching at home. The, the ref, not the older ref, the younger ref with the black hair, he refed my son's basketball game this weekend. Wow. He has a very quick trigger on jump balls. Like one second of grappling, done, right? So, and that jump ball was super quick when they called it. That is they didn't true. give them any time to fight for it. Exactly. I was shocked at that. Very quick, right? Yeah. Another two points for Gurchens. Slick jumper there by the Falcons. <laughs> Kelly with another three off the rim. Spin move. Demo off, off the mark. Fetty pushing the ball once again. Nice move. Was that Connor O'Brien with the rebound? Yes. Another one by O'Brien. Two rebounds from Connor O'Brien, making his presence felt. 
with his first game action in a while. Timeout, Locust Valley, 30 seconds on a little bit of a half-hearted, half-court press there from the Bayman. And we'll be back in 30 seconds. Coming back out of the timeout, want to give special recognition to our new camera guy, ATR Ray Ray, Anthony Rayo, making his debut on the camera tonight. He's doing a great job. If you guys see him in school tomorrow, please make sure you give him a big high five. He's doing fantastic on his first night on the camera. Locust ba Valley bringing the ball in. Joe Henry with a foul. Don't know what he possibly could have called him. It looked like he was playing excellent defense, keeping yeah. up with him pace for pace. I'm confused on that one, too. His hands were out. There was no reaching in. But, alas, we have a foul. <laughs> Big three-pointer there from Malaka. 25-13, Logos Valley. Nice ball moving from the Bayman again. They're doing a great job swinging this ball around. They just got to get some production out of it. It's got to lead to something. Maybe they got to get a little inside-outside play. Shot clock is down to 10. Six. Jackson Kelly with the three. desperation three, and he hits it. Big shot from Jackson Kelly. Is that Kelly with three three pointers already? That gives him a Bayman leading a nine points. Another steal from Owen Perfetti. He's got back door. Kelly's got back door. He's got a cut. Cut right now, Jackson. That was a great pass in the Perfetti. They are giving Jackson Kelly so much space down there on the end line. He's just got to start learning how to take that space, make that back door cut. Can execute that, then Oyster Bay has high hopes for this game still. 50 seconds left on the game clock. Travel? There was like 17 steps down there in the paint. Another rebound from Jackson Kelly. I mean, my guy didn't even dribble. That wasn't a Euro step, that was a Euro rail pass on that one. He went from Europe to Asia and back. Foul on the ground by number 15, Famil Gletti. Now you would know this being a basketball player. You, all three of you guys on, in our commentary booth would know this. If you go in and get fouled, can you just desperately throw the ball up with that count or is he just gonna say, no, I still on the floor? I've seen that in the NBA, you do that a lot. But here, Maybe. basketball, in the Wisher Bay basketball, Steal Joseph Henry. Pressure. 
depending on uh, how fast you can get those hands up. You might trick him in to get into a shooting time. Josh Brammer checking in, varsity athlete. Maybe sometimes he can do a little tricky rope a action there on the on the older refs. And at, that's a buzzer for halftime. 25-16 Locust Valley going into the half. Jackson Kelly is leading the Bayman. Nine points, three rebounds. Owen Perfetti, three points, two assists. Aiden Winhausen, four points, five rebounds. Got a good game here. For the Locust Valley Falcons. Demo, ten points. Gurchins, 11 points. We will see you all in the second half.
We are back coming in here for the second half of the game. I am joined by now Anthony Reyes now on the microphone. Christian Munoz is on the other headset. I am back on the camera. Boys, they say basketball is a game of adjustments. What kind of adjustments do you think Coach Venegas has made here at halftime? Look, I, no idea. I think he's, uh, he's really trying to lock in the defense to make sure that the defense kind of picks up on the slack that they've been leaving out a little bit lately. Um, and hopefully drop a little more points, keep, keep the game pretty close. Now let's say you two are out there on the court. Demo and Gurchins are really start, are killing us. What would you do to try and shut those two boys down? We definitely need more uh, inside defense. I feel like we're lacking a lot of that right now. So there's your adjustments. There's the, I love the expert commentary from Christian Munoz. A little more inside defense, maybe a little more physicality down inside the paint. Make them work a little bit harder for it. Let's see what Oyster Bay can do coming out here in the second half. We got a Henry, we got Perfetti, Jackson Kelly, Von Bargen, and we got Aiden Winhausen coming out here to start the second half. Let's see what we got coming out here. At the Boathouse. The three-pointer from Joe Henry goes up off the top, and we're going back the other way. Yeah, he better call that travel. There was like 700 steps there. He could have walked from here to Bonanza's on that one. Perfetti fell down on that pass. The swing and did a great rebound from Windhausen. The Falcons were just a little bit too physical there, though. Rebound from Perfetti. He's pushing it hard up the court. And we got a foul from number 22, Levin, on the ground. We're coming right back in. Jackson Kelly got that ball in real fast. He's feeling, oh, in and out. Demo just imposing his will. A little bit too high, a little bit too much. Uh, I really think that's something that Owen is struggling with this game is uh, his passing. A little too hard or too high. He's, he's almost there. He just needs to get it on the money. You know, you guys are too young to remember this, but there was a there was a great point guard played at LSU, and then he eventually went into the pros. His name was Pistol Pete Maravich, and he had these incredible passes. They were a little bit too hard. They came out of nowhere, and they just kept surprising his teammates, and they just couldn't handle the passes. Owens reminded me a lot about Pistol Pete. Oh, that's going the other way. Great charge. Taking it like a champ, Aiden Windhausen. Great job. And Oyster Bay was a little bit too eager to get the ball in. Ref hadn't put it in yet.
Windhausen with the rebound and another two points. That's six on the night for Aiden Windhausen. Von Bargen with the foul. That's his second foul on the evening. Jackson Kelly, nice rebound in traffic, and we're pushing it the other way. Oh, and Perfetti knocking it down for three. Cutting the lead down to 29-21. That's six on the night for Perfetti. But Locust Valley comes right back with another three. They are just trading punches at this point. Joe Henry showing that toughness and intensity. Windhausen with another two. Brings him up to eight for the game. Great defense on the inside right there. Great look on the inside. That was a great look on the inside from Perfetti. <laughs> Coach Venegas is right to be heated on that one. That was looked like a charge all day long. I could agree on that. That looks like a charge. Donovan Jones checking in. DJ is in the house. And it looks like Oyster Bay is playing up on the high press. They're going to ease off it real quick, though. Some great defense right there. That's the kind of energy you want coming in off the bench. Boys, did you guys play them in, in football? All right. Locust Valley? Yeah, you did? Yeah. Okay. All right. We play them in soccer. I just want to make sure we play them in everything. Yeah. Okay. Conference B matchup. Always tight. Always physical. A lot of history with these two teams. These two schools. Great switch. Great defense. That's a great block by Jackson Kelly, but Demo is just too strong again. He is just seemingly imposing his will on the Bayman. I thought putting Joe Henry um, on Demo it was a great choice by uh, Coach Venegas. He's a very aggressive player for being a freshman on a varsity football team, too. Very, very aggressive. He's one of the more uh, physical players, as you can say. Um, and that's kind of what you need right now. You need somebody to take that lead, play more physical. Right, and that's what they need. They need, it seems like Oyster Bay, they're falling into this lull, right? There's like a little bit of a lack of energy on this court. They need someone who's going to be this vocal leader on that court to rally this team, right? They're down 11. Third quarter. Let's get the energy on the court. Let's start doing a little bit of screaming and yelling. We need someone to make a big defensive stop, slap the court, bring the energy level up with this team. Something like Coach Venegas used to do when he played for the Bayman. I don't want to say how long ago because I don't want to expose his age, but many years ago. But I feel like with the way Donovan Jones is coming into this game, playing defense right away, 
that's the kind of thing that he could probably do right away. Just get up in their face, play some strong defense, have a key steal, come back the other way, hit a three, change the, change the intensity of this game. Oh, here it comes. I can feel this run coming. Owen Perfetti is scary at that three-point line. But see, Demo comes right back in their face. And he's like, nope, I'm not going to let you do it. Windhausen knows how to work that paint. Jackson Kelly running around the end line. That might be the weakest foul I've seen called all game. Yeah, it, over here, it looked like he was touching all ball. He had all ball that whole way. And there's no way that should be a shooting foul either. That foul was on the ground the whole time. But Demo's going to shoot two. He misses them both. That was good work from Donovan Jones down there in the paint. Very aggressive. Let's see what Coach Venegas has cooked up. Perfetti's going to inbound. Well, the old switcheroo, a little razzle-dazzle. Ill-timed pass there, but got lucky. Still Oyster Bay ball. Quick inbounds. You know what? He's got that. He's got that streaky energy. You know, he he, he can get, once he catches on fire, he'll just hit him all night. But he's very hit and miss right now. Yeah, he's having an off night. I've watched Jackson play a lot. He is more of a shooter, and when he's hot, he is a scary person at that three-point line. And they're giving him all the space in the world. be honest with you I've been I've been giving these refs some grief all night but that was another missed call that should still be Logos Valley ball gotta see it gotta call both ways in life boys you gotta take the good you gotta take the bad you gotta take them both and there you have the facts of life
offense is there right now. We were just talking about Joe Henry and his aggressiveness, but you know what? We could also throw in there George, because George is a very physical player, as he was on the football field as well. The aggressive twins. That's, that's what you can call them. Fetty with a desperation shot at the buzzer. Going into the fourth quarter, 36-26, Locust Valley up. And we'll see you in for the final quarter here. Let's see what kind of adjustments Coach Venegas can make heading into the fourth. Put your hand in the air. Stick those four fingers up. Fourth quarter action coming to you from the boathouse. This is where it all matters. This is where you separate the men from the boys. This is where those long nights of practice sneak in. Legs are getting tired. They're getting jelly-like. Gotta have the tough practice. The tough practice makes a very good quarter player. Another two for Gurchins. I feel like at some point Oyster Bay is going to want to start thinking about double teaming those guys, Gurchins and Demo. Let Locust Valley get their points from somewhere else. I think without those two, they'd be lost. I think Demo's up to 18, and Gurchin's has got to be at 15 or 16 points at this point. Von Bargain off the side of the rim. Great steal, great heads-up play. We're going to ignore that shot clock. There's a, not a shot clock violation. They just did not reset the shot clock. It's going to stay Locust Valley ball. Max Lapita is going to check into the game for Mr. Henry. Max brings a lot of intensity to the game. Yeah. Definitely. A lot of tests. He, li he likes to sneak in there where you don't expect them. Very sneaky player. That foul is going to be on Freddie Von Bargen. That's his third foul. I don't know about that call, guys. That was a little bit too easy there for the Falcons. They're calling that one on Windhausen. That's his third. Bayman are starting to get in a little bit of foul trouble here. Just more aggression than pain. I feel like we are really lacking that, not, like I said before. But not too much aggression because you know you don't want to. <laughs> Gurchin sits them both. 40 26 Locust Valley. It's 
like the Bayman are starting to get a little worried about the clock there, letting the ball roll up the court. He is just having an off night. Hate to see it. Von Bargain with great rebound. Jackson Kelly run it the other way. Foul on the court. We just need some momentum in this fourth quarter. That's five rebounds for Von Bargain. Somebody that Coach Venegas should be really thinking about putting in right now would be Joe Henry to bring that Well, they're also missing a key part of this team. Jaden out with the knee injury. That is true. Jaden really does carry the defense. Well, not carry, but you know, bring that intensity. Everybody plays their part, but he's a big key in this. And in this game, it could have been very different. Especially on the defense, though, because of his top of the defense. You know, his wingspan really helps him out there. Great. Quick call on the jump ball, but it's going to stay Oyster Bay's way. Those boys just barely touched that ball together. Don, you were, you were pretty right about that one. The ref with the black hair really does like to call the jump ball. He called that so quick. Boys, as we come into this timeout, we have a new burger place opening up here in Oyster Bay right down the street. What do you guys think about that? I've seen that. Uh, I don't know. I can't really say anything until I try it. Do we have any idea when that place is going to open? No clue, but I think me and Chris are going to have to go check it out pretty soon. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, that's like the most exciting news I've seen in like the last five or six years. I'm more excited for that than I was for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all we got around here is like Mario's. Maybe. Don't, don't have a lot of food options out here. In the yeah, so definitely not. Really, maybe it can help us out. I think maybe as soon as that opens, we're going to have to go down there, get some burgers, maybe some milkshakes. They have a menu hanging up in the window. I haven't driven slow enough to check it on my way into work. Maybe I'll check that out on my way home. We'll check it out later. Well, Easter Bay has been a little sloppy on these inbound passes. Something I think that uh, maybe Coach Venegas is going to have to want to try and clean up in our next practice here. Wide open on the layup. Another two. 42-26, Logos Valley. 4.45 left to play in the fourth. They're a very aggressive team. We really need some players to get hot right now. Well, once we start rolling, we usually roll for a while. This is hopefully a comeback game. I mean, we've seen it before. We have, we have seen it before. A few games ago, double OT. And as Joe Henry checks into the game, Say goodbye to our Lady Bayman, who are off to Locust Valley to play their game. Lady Bayman, good luck tonight. Good luck. Take it to the Falcons. Post work. Locust Valley is just all over the place. The defense by Locust Valley, you got to give them a little bit of credit. It's really good right now. Another three from the corner. Takes it to 45-26. Up 20 with four minutes left to play. Boys, I have a feeling that this game is slipping away from our Bayman here. Well, you know, we, we hope not. We don't always like to see our, our Bayman JV basketball players win. Gurchins just hammers Owen Perfetti there unnecessarily. But he's going to put Perfetti on the line. Let's see if he can hit his charity shots. That was Gurchin's third foul of the game. <laughs> 
In and out on the second for Perfetti. Perfetti is all over him. Perfetti has that aggressiveness that we really need right now. Such a great player. Can't wait to see what he becomes. He's really, he, I'm going to tell you something. He's really developing into a great little basketball player. I'm be excited to see. He's only a freshman too, right? Yeah. I'm be excited to see what happens to him in the next few years. See what he turns into. He's a great future in basketball. I'll tell you, this is, you're looking at the future of Oyster Bay basketball right now. These boys are playing together real well. The future is bright. That is a deep three. Two more rebounds in the stat book for Oyster Bay. Oh, top Jackson. of the key. That's his There shot. we go, Jackson Kelly. You know, I could say his spot is definitely on the top of the key. Team leading 12 points for Mr. Kelly. Owen Perfetti picking up another foul on the open floor. And it looks like we're going to get a fresh four for Oyster Bay. AJ Kim. Oh, and uh, the O'Brien brother. My main man, Connor. Oh, we're on the line. We are in the bonus time. One and one for the Falcons. Out of bounds. We're going the other way. That was some. That was great call. And I got to tell you, Donovan Jones and Mr. O'Brien had some great defense right there, trying to fight for that ball. Donovan Jones is a great player, also very aggressive. He had some history here. A lot of cousins that played. Yes, he did. I got to tell you, this, I feel like it, DJ is a is the kind of player that needs a lot more run here. And DJ is going to the line. He got fouled. He's going to the line. Oyster Bay is also in the bonus. He's going to be shooting two. One on one. Great there shot. We there we go. Getting his first. Oh, wait a minute. That was a technical? Great shot. Someone got called with a tech. I love to see it. I love to see it. It's like someone on Locust Valley got called for a technical. Didn't see who got called for that, but. And we're getting a full timeout. Off the technical foul. Coming out of the timeout, 45-31 Locust Valley. Folks, make sure you stick around. After this game, we're going to have the varsity telecast coming up next. It will be a brand new stream. Stick around for that. Our varsity team is looks like they're behind the bench. They're getting ready. Coach Boyle just showed up. He is in the house with Coach Abate. They're getting ready to take down the Falcons later. 
Let's see if they have any more luck. AJ Kim from deep. Donovan Jones, Donovan Jones with the rebound. In traffic. Whoa, and he's getting called for travel. I don't know how he could travel when he did not have possession of the ball, but I'm not a ref, so what do I know? Love to see it. I love to see it. And Locus Alley's going to slow it down with two minutes, five seconds left on the clock. Quick layup for number 10. Back the other way. Really need to push the floor here, guys. Definitely got to get that ball moving. The shots are there. The space is there for the shot. They just got to work to find the right shot. Looks like Coach Venegas is going to the bench. Jordan Moran, Joel Molina, and Christian Alfaro Palacios checking into the game here. Joel is a, a very great shooter. You know, I've, I've watched him a couple times. Very great shooter. Really hoping for a, a Joel three today. I've been hoping all season to see one. Maybe this is the time. Molina and Palacio, Alfaro Palacios, of course, two of the rising future stars in the Oyster Bay soccer program. Christian Alfaro Palacios, number 14, one of the best central midfield defenders in the county. Great defense by Joel. Joel locking him down right now. He is lost. He does not know where to go. That's the kind of defensive aggression he shows. And he got called for five second holding. I think that's a 15 yard penalty, boys. Yeah. Gotcha. Red card. <laughs> it's a two minute minor. Oh, Joel well crossed him up. Joel gets his own rebound and he's shooting too, folks. You can see the fans love Joel. Varsity players jumping up and down in the back. Let's see if Joel can hit his charity shots here. I'd love to see the support. There we go, Mr. Molina. I believe those might be his first JV points ever. I uh, might be. Not 100% sure on that one. Oh. We'll have our statistician checked out in a little while. Jordan Moran with the steal. Pulls up. 40 seconds left. 47-32, Locust Valley. And we are going back. Oyster baseball. I don't know where that was going, but. We have a two second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Coach is going to call for no fouls here, probably. 20 seconds left. And this game is just going to die out. Yeah, they're just going to hold the ball. And, folks, that's going to do it for us. 47-32, Locust Valley, Oyster Bay. Joel Molina just does not know how to end the game. This is all new to him. He doesn't realize you're supposed to just let the game end. And Locust Valley is going to go to the line. I think Coach Venegas is going to have to work on that with him. At the end of the game... Oyster Bay leaders, Aiden Winhausen, 8 points, 10 rebounds. Owen Perfetti, 10 points, 4 assists. Jackson Kelly, 12 points, 4 rebounds. Freddie Von Bargen, 7 rebounds. A couple of points in there. And Lopez Valley scored a bunch of points. And that's going to do it, folks. We'll catch you next time on Saturday for the JV action. Check back on our YouTube channel a little while for the varsity action. Varsity is going to take on... Locust Valley here in a little while. We'll see you later, folks.